Hello and welcome back. In our previous episode, we focused on election anticipatory anxiety or election uncertainty. And we talked about a number of things, especially as Kenyans, that is triggering anxiety. We talked about the political um, leaders. We talked about the negative news. We talked about um, the, the firm political stance we are taking, what we call the all or nothing things that will trigger anxiety, even previous history um, about election periods in our country that will trigger anxiety. And today we promise to talk about how to deal with election um, anticipatory anxiety or election uncertainty. And we left you with a question to assess what this is doing to you, to observe what's going on with you in the last three or so months even as we await the elections um, in August. So have you observed your emotions? Have you observed your level of anxiety? Have you observed any changes probably with your motivation to go to work, uh, motivation to engage others, even to go to church or a religious setting if you're a spiritual person? Um, your sleep patterns, have they changed? Uh, maybe for the worse? And, uh, are you probably getting agitated more and even more anxious and probably even angry when you watch news? What's going on with you? And if you have observed that these things are happening and probably you've exchanged bitterly with someone, have you found yourself um, conflicting to a point where you're stonewalling each other because of political issues? And this can be very, very sad. That can be very, very sad if that is where you've gotten. And if out of all that anxiety, then you've also been coping negatively and also making it contagious to others because you're constantly anxious, you're constantly negative about these things. So the messages you're passing on to others on WhatsApp group, the conversations you're having have also been provoking or probably evoking anxiety in other people we will talk about how to reduce these anxiety levels and how to ensure that you're also taking care of yourself. The number one and the most important thing, after you have observed what's going on with you, please acknowledge this situation is not easy for everyone. Acknowledge that you're impacted. Don't play avoidance. Don't um, try to run away from the situation. We are in this country and we are seeing what's going on. Watching news, uh, reading on social media all the negative things that are happening, that you're spending your free time constantly following the leaders. And number two, we talked about you avoiding the errant kind of thinking we described, the all or nothing, uh, where you're taking very um, tough stances that you belong to this party and you also belong to this party without objectivity, that there is none of the parties or none of the positions that have been taken a hundred percent. We need to be objective, we need to be realistic, we need to be practical and know that each side will have its negatives and its positives. And as we go into the elections, we are really looking at those who may have the interests of this country at heart, not selfish interest. And also for you as you're choosing them, is it based on your selfish interest because you probably think you'll gain? Or is it about the country and the future generations for your children, your grandchildren? and probably um, your work. There are people who evoke a lot of anxiety because they always catastrophize easy issues. They think the worst is about to happen. They magnify uh, issues and make a small mountain from a molehill. So something more happens and we think the worst will happen. We also need to be realistic. We also need to say the election has not happened. There is no war that is happening. There are no people who are going to be displaced. Let's hope for the best. Let's pass positive messages. Let's be in the here and now. What is working in your lives? One way of overcoming fortune telling and catastrophizing and magnifying is also being realistic and focusing on the here and now. The savior mentality, the politicians promise that your life after 10th August will be different. No, that is not likely to happen. Whatever your kids eat, whatever is happening in your life, your education, uh, your work, your business is likely going to continue depending on your efforts. We've had broken promises all the way from 
time immemorial when we have had promises um, mentioned by politicians in this country. Let us stay reminded that we choose leaders so that they can put policies and structures in place and systems so that we can be able to operate and do things better. But we need to take responsibility for our individual lives. For the positive things we want to see, it will depend on our positive efforts. For the negative things that may be happening in our lives, it is because we are choosing certain paths and making certain decisions. One best way of ensuring that you're not anxious or even depressed is counting your blessings, what we call um, a spirit of gratitude. If you learn to keep a gratitude journal, where are you journaling? What worked for me today? What is positive for me today? that is likely to dissipate a lot of anxiety. And you're likely to start experiencing peaceful sleep and peaceful nights because you're already counting on what's working. Another way of uh, taking care of your anxiety is to observe a good self-care. Exercise will dissipate your anxiety. So you can get into a regime of either just walking or maybe going to the gym, or maybe just doing exercises in your home in whatever way you can. Maybe some weightliftings, we always make it very basic. You can just get bottles of water and fill them with water and those will be your weights and you can just keep lifting them and jogging on the spot. We don't all, we can't all access gyms, but we can have a way of exercising, even right in our own homes and in our, in our bedrooms. Another way of taking care of yourself, especially when you feel very, very anxious, and you feel like you want to say something very negative to someone, or even get very aggressive and very hostile. Sit back, retreat, and so do some form of deep breathing. You can do a count of five seconds on five breaths in, slowly, and then out slowly. And then repeat five to 10 cycles and don't focus on anything else at that point when you're doing your deep breathing. Just focus on the air in and the air out. And by the time you're done with your five cycles or 10 cycles, your anxiety will be gone. Protect yourself from contagious groups. What do I mean by that? Groups that are um, triggering an, your anxiety, that you go in and you find people constantly talking about politics. So you can avoid that. Also, don't be the one who is passing on these messages through WhatsApp groups, on Facebook, on Instagram, or whatever platforms you're on, because anxiety is contagious. At the family level, let us have rules where we are not constantly talking about the politics. If people are getting angry, agitated, and annoyed, we can say, as far as we are concerned, this is our home where we all belong. I'm not seeing your leader, political leader. I'm also not seeing your political leader. This is our space. Make your space and enjoy being together as a family. Even after 8th, after 9th August, you will still be a family. So let us not allow politicians to come and separate you, especially if you're married uh, from different tribes. It is very sad that during elections, people end up separating. We need to avoid this. And we pray and hope even the church can, can come in and talk about these things even in a serious way and as a community. So can we can dissipate and we can have a, a, a dialogue about how to have peace, maintain peace, and be objective about these things because they affect us. Let us remember that around the globe, we are known for our resilience. Let us ride this wave with grace and commitment to our motherland and to know that whatever happens, we will rise again. Take care of yourself. Avoid this election anticipatory anxiety. Because whatever you are and whatever is about you is what you take wherever you go. So if you remain sober, if you remain healthy, that is what you're taking to everybody else. And after 9th August, we hope and pray that the leaders who will win will win with humility. And the losers will also lose with grace because this is a competition and then we can all come back together and put it behind us and continue building our families growing our businesses and building our nation may god bless kenya thank you for watching kindly share subscribe and let us get this message out see you in our next video